just hand me the paper during my call. I can just do it online. Hey everyone, thanks so much for joining us. We are going to get started in just a couple minutes, so um, go ahead and sit back and we will start soon.
All right, so let's get started. Hey everyone, uh, thanks so much for joining us um, and welcome to our last webinar of the Free Black Mama webinar series. It's been such a pleasure uh, getting to share our work with you. I'm talking about needs assessments to um, different advocacy efforts happening across the cities and the states and the country um, and helping troubleshoot bailouts. Um, it's been, it's really, it's really been a journey y'all. Um, and I'm really excited to be joined by four really dope, dope panelists who have been leading this work, who have been bringing home our moms and caregivers and have been pushing their local cities and states to do better. So today with us, we have Rissa Hall, who is the Director of National Bailout. We have Medusa Carter from Dignity, Dignity Act Now Collective, holding it down um, in Pittsburgh and in Pennsylvania. We have Valencia Gunder with the new Florida majority bring home our black moms and caregivers in Florida and Miami. And we have Candace McKinley with the Philadelphia Community Bail Fund who has been doing the work um, in getting our people free. Today we're going to give you just a real, we're going to give you grounding and a general recap of this year's bailouts efforts. And then our panelists um, from our um, from the different cities and states will move us through their bailout efforts. They have some really exciting updates. We just heard a really exciting update just now from V. Um, but yeah, some updates around the bailout efforts. And then we're gonna talk through National Bailout's next steps. Um, and then leave space for questions and additional sharebacks. Um, but happy Mama's Day, happy Caregiver's Day to anyone who has celebrated, who celebrated this past Sunday. Um, and we're really, again, just excited to be sharing this space with you um, post Mama's Day. We did that and we're continuing to do it. So with that, I'm gonna pass it off to Rissa to get us started. Thank you, Delane. Hey y'all, so we definitely did do that. Um, in particularly in the midst of the Rona, AKA COVID-19 um, and all the challenges and struggles that it has presented um, for us in our communities. So what we did thus far, um, so I'm just gonna give y'all a general recap. And as Delane said, um, these lovely folks over here are gonna talk more um, detail about their local bailout work and their respective cities and organizations. But just as a general recap, wanted to name that um, we have built out at least 60 people thus far um, and counting. So yay to that. Um, recently just paid a $200,000 bill in LA. Um, and so like a $200,000 bill in LA, yes, yesterday. Um, so continuing to, to count our blessings and count our people as they come out. And the bailouts will be happening until the end of May. So when we say in counting, we mean that it's in counting and folks are going to be released throughout the end of May. Um, 
We've also been able to raise over $2 million in counting. Um, so shout out to all of y'all for supporting us and saying yes uh, with your coins and your generosity. Um, and just to note that like those funds have helped to get that mama out and get the folks out that um, y'all will be speaking, that y'all will be hearing about today. Um, and it also will be going to support the very critical post bailout work, um, which is the supportive services, right? Um, the keeping our people out, the keeping our people held and supported um, in here. Um, and so that is um, where those resources will also be going. Um, and we had at least 15 cities across the country participate. We have um, about, uh, about 10 more cities that will be participating um, until the end of May. So we really, really are looking forward to getting more people home, getting more people organized, um, and strategizing for our collective liberation and to end pre-child detention and money bill. And so just for grounding for folks who don't know, right, and thinking about like these numbers and what this means, um, these are the folks that we've been able to bail out um, in times for Mama's Day um, and bailing out Black mamas and caregivers, which is the mission, uh, one of the missions and tactics of National Bailout. Um, for those of you who are new to the party, uh, National Bailout is a collective of Black organizers and lawyers and magic makers that are committed to building a, a, a community-based uh, movement to end pre-child detention and mass criminalization. Um, and we have done that most famously through the tactic, the tactic of Black Mamas Bailout, where we have bailed out as many Black mamas and caregivers um, for Mother's Day as possible. Um, we now have 462 people that we've bailed out since 2017 and counting, um, and really, really excited to be counting and to continue that work um, and use it as a tactical intervention in our collective liberation. Um, and this tactic to do a bailout was the invitation of Mary Hooks, who is the co-director of Southern's New Ground, um, and very much in an honor and respect um, of our ancestors who had to bail themselves out. Not bail, right, but had to pay um, for their freedom in many ways. Um, and so some of our strategic priorities to end mass criminalization, um, to end pre-child detention, and get our people free is to do bailouts. Um, that is how we immediately are able to do that. That is what we're in the midst of right now and what we're going to be recapping and talking to y'all about today. Um, that is, we are able to change the material conditions of our people and get them out and identify our leaders. Um, our second priority is to build political community with the folks that we bail out. So as I said, the post, the post bailout work is the most critical. Um, and that is how we move in, in accordance to our values and our politics. So we do not believe that we are solely supportive service providers um, or bail payers, which are very important, which is very important work and very important roles. But we believe that we are co-conspirators in our liberation together, that our liberations are connected to the people who is inside of CADIS currently. Um, and we have done that through fellowship programs for the past two years in which we skilled mamas up um, and Pay and, and paid them to participate in political development fellowship. We were doing that and offering wraparound supportive services as a way to build political community with the folks that we bail out. Um, and we'll continue to do that and build on that work um, in the upcoming uh, months. And our third and definitely last but definitely not least priority is thought leadership. It's just to say that as Black people doing this work, um, we are the experts of our experiences and we are the experts of this work. So believe us. <laughs> um, and, and follow us. Um, and we also know that those of us who are closest to the problems are also closest to the ability to mold the solutions. Um, and we are at invitation, right? We recognize, that we recognize this as a tactic. We said yes when Mary said that to us in January 2017 and hope that everyone else says yes and people have continued to say yes in multiple ways. Um, but we also want to make it possible for your yes. So we've been offering resources such as um, a curriculum which teaches people about bail and teaches people about pre-trial detention that you can use in multiple settings. Um, we created a toolkit, which is a step-by-step -step guide on how to do a bailout um, if you are so inspired to do so or to support local bailout work. Um, and we also will be releasing a report, which will be dropping 
in September. Um, and we do these webinars, right? We talk to y'all about our work. We have these lovely people talking about the work that they do across the country. Um, and we also provide technical assistance, one-on-one -on -one technical assistance to organizers um, all of the time. So holla at us if you need any support and you can also visit our website at nationalbailout.org um, to learn more. And that is the grounding. And I'll pass it back to you, Delaine. So oh, thank you so much, Arissa, for moving us through that. Um, now we're about to get into it and hear from our people in in Florida and Philadelphia and in Phil wait, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, Philadelphia, Pittsburgh. Yes. So we're gonna do some city updates. So I'm gonna pass it to V first, and we're just asking folks to share your bailout number updates, any status updates. So like highlights and happiest moments and patterns and even some challenges that you experienced and then also how have these bailouts been a part of your larger local organizing strategy so i pass it off to v from new florida majority to start us off thank you so much good afternoon everybody this is valencia everybody calls me v she her pronouns um from the beautiful city of miami um our bailout went well, it's, we're still in the middle of it, rather. Um, this is our first year, the New Florida Majority in our coalition, which we're calling the South Florida Bailout, Black Mamas Bailout. Um, it's um, the New Florida Majority, Dignity Florida, the Miami Worker Center, the Southern Birth Justice Network, and Soul Sisters Leadership Collective. Um, those organizations want to come together to not just get our sisters and our moms and our caregivers out the cage, but also um, to make sure they stay out of the cage, right? Which I know that's the same values, NBO and all of the rest of the organizations on this platform, um, you know, uplift and that's what we stand on. Um, so our goal, we set out to bail out five mamas, that was our number. And uh, we wanted to work across three counties in South Florida, which is Miami-Dade, Broward County and Palm Beach County. Um, we have way more organizational infrastructure in Miami. So we were like, we're gonna bail out three in Miami and one in each other county, just so we could get a feel of it. And so next time we can be able to do more in those counties. Um, but it didn't work out like that. We ended up bailing out two in Miami, two in Broward and one in Palm Beach. And we're working to get one more sister out in Palm Beach this week. Um, so it ended up being six sisters um, to, to date. Well, as of a few minutes ago, we have officially bailed out five women, um, well, five folks, and I'm gonna tell y'all why I keep switching it um, around. Um, and it's been um, amazing to see. Um, so we decided all to go to the jails to pay the, the funds um, Saturday night, well, midnight, um, going into Mother's Day. And um, I didn't know that it would take them two and a half hours to take our money. Um, they just had us there. I literally was the only person in the jail because y'all know it's the time of COVID and not allowing big crowds. And I sat there and sat there and sat there, but I was excited because I that was my first time doing it. So I just sat, sat through it. And um, after two and a half hours wait, they took the money, I got receipts. And I asked how long would it take for the, um, the sisters to be released? They told me eight to 12 hours, unfortunately, um, they released these women at 5 a.m. Um, like most cities um, in Miami, our jail sits way far out, away from everything. Usually there's no bus, no transportation. Y'all know how that works, right? And um, these women had to walk two hours because they were not even allowed to use the phone. So when I called to check the status of their release at 10 a.m., I, I was informed that they were already released and it scared the crap out of me. So then I had to become a private eye and find the sisters, but I was successful in doing it. It took us about three hours to find them. But once we found them, they were really, really excited. Um, they said they were informed that we were going to build them out. They didn't believe that it was going to happen. And when they named were called to go home, they were like, oh, they actually did it. And then when we um, came with the wraparound services, um, the two sisters was like, you know, just y'all paying the bail was enough for us. Like they wasn't even expecting all the other things that we brought that day. And um, by the time we got to the two sisters in Miami, the one sister in Palm Beach was already out. 
And um, just like you all told us at the pre-convening, some people need a lot of services, some people needed none. Um, we we created a temporary re-entry home. So we rented out an Airbnb for a month. And um, we are allowing the sisters who need housing to stay there until we can find them temporary or permanent housing um, because we don't want them to be homeless or on the street or roaming during this time. And um, the needs assessment, and then we had a um, homecoming celebration virtually on Sunday um, after they provided them with the Mother's Day dinner. And they were super excited. And um, the reason why I keep switching the word from sisters or mamas to folks is because one of the individuals that we bailed out was a trans man. And um, he um, informed us of this after the bailout, but he is an actual parent. And um, we were really excited to get him out of there. And um, he was very happy and, um, and, and felt the love that we won. Like one of the first questions on the needs assessment is what is your preferred name and what are your pronouns? And he was like, he was so happy. We asked him that his name is Henry. And, um, you know, based off of just what the state gives you on that website, you can't tell. So we took a shot in the dark. And then the other um, individual that we bailed out in Miami-Dade County, they are a masculine presenting woman. But when I asked pronouns, they had never even heard of that before. And so when um, we dug into the needs assessment, they were just like, wow, like, I like this type of question. They were just really pleased with the needs assessment, the wraparound services. They love the fact that they have somebody to call on, which is their bail buddies and their case managers. Um, so yeah, it's just been good. And we've had our uphill battles with fighting with um, Broward County. Um, we're getting these sisters out. So that's why they just came home today. And we have a bail hearing on Thursday for one more sister. We're trying to get a, a reduction so that we can get her out of the facility but this has been a, um, a really get great experience for this to be my first time. And um, I was just sharing with someone that the pre-convener helped me out a whole lot. So I was able to ask a lot of questions and listening to individuals with experience um, and their stories and some of the ways they handle things really helped me out um, and be prepared for what happened this past weekend. So thank you. Yes, B. Thank you, thank you, thank you, thank you. Shout out to y'all. First bailouts, and y'all did that. Y'all did it so beautifully. Five Moms and Caregivers Home is a win. Um, and also, thank you for that reminder that, just, again, that when we say Black Moms and Caregivers, we're not only talking about cis women. We're not only talking about what data and stats tell us. We're talking about our people, all our people um, who fit under that. Um, yeah, and your bailouts are just a reminder that well, we got our people, we love our people, and we come for our people. So thank you for moving us through y'all bailouts. Y'all bailouts. Um, so I'm gonna pass it over to Medusa from Dignity Act Now Collective over in Pittsburgh to move us through y'all's bailouts. Uh, peace and power, y'all. How y'all doing? Um, this year was our first uh, bailout in Pittsburgh. We worked in both cities, both um, in Philly and uh, Pittsburgh. We provided care packages for, um, I think, like nine women that were bailed out in uh, uh, Philly. Um, we were able to, like, physically post bail for one person. Uh, we encountered a lot of detainers. Um, ironically, what would happen is that we would uh, start working with a person we wrote support letters um, and what have you. These people would get out without us having to pet, post bail. So we would help with the release of at least six different women. Even on yesterday, as we did our, our car action in Pittsburgh, um, we had about 30 cars out there. We got press coverage. We, um, we did really good in terms of amplifying the word. In the middle of that, we got a call from, um, from a sister who's actually from Florida and was up in Pittsburgh and happened to get arrested. And so we just called around for that person. That person was released. Um, so it was just like a matter of like, just having someone on the outside was, uh, was a lot, um, was a lot of support. Um, yes, yes, we will send those out as well. Um, we tried to tag y'all in there. I think we tagged y'all in all the pictures. I don't know how that um, came about or whatever. I'm not the tag person, um, but so we were able to get, uh, like I said, we, we were able to support, uh, was it five other six, counting the woman yesterday, so um, able to get them out. One of the 
issues that we were encountering is that some of the women were getting released to the state hospital. Um, and so essentially we would check back with the public defender and they didn't want to deal with us. They only wanted to deal with um, our white liaisons. And unfortunately, um, co coming into this, our white liaisons were like gatekeepers. Um, and so we had to like try to figure out how to navigate um, like the, the system on our own, like how to talk to different people, how to deal with discharge and what have you on our own. So we ended up um, kind of like trial and error on, on some of those cases, but nevertheless, we were able to get um, some folks home. We were able to pay the rent up for um, the person we did bail out. We were able to get them groceries and resources, um, even continuing to work with the women in Philadelphia. Um, we had them on a call today. We did our virtual re-entry uh, today. Um, we had a really great turnout. We had a few of the women who were bailed out speak about their experience. We had some of the women um, uh, who were who were released for COVID, um, who uh, wanted to you know join in on the work um, that that we're doing. We had them on the call just talking about the conditions um, of the jails and the the distinction between the the male prisons and the women prisons. What was different in terms of the cleanliness and um, the reaction to folks um, that were in the, the women's prisons. Um, we were able to get um, some trans, trans, our trans group and um, our trans comrades in uh, Pittsburgh involved, Sisters Pittsburgh, we was able to get them on the ground out there um, and holding it down. Uh, I just say that uh, maybe for this first one, the biggest issue was those detainers because Allegheny County Jail did such a big release of folks that they put extra pressure on the folks who were um, in there. And so some of them would have like four or five different detainers. Um, again, they could be federal uh, detainers, county detainers, drug court detainers, what have you. Um, and so we were writing uh, these judges um, and trying to get folks out. But it, it, again, some of the folks that we worked with, they would mysteriously get released and then we couldn't find them. And then they pop up in um they pop up in like the the state um the state hospital which is not where we want to be sending folks who are who are having mental health um issues we want to send them to a home we want to send them to a facility where they'll actually get treatment and not treated like um you know not treated inhumane um one of the girls that we were working with um is 20 year old uh 20 year old sister that, um maybe I don't know how many different psychotropics she was on but they had her in solitary confinement for 70 days um and so we were able to get her home and she's like home and and, and returning to her life uh what have you she was released for COVID but um it's still like like kind of suffering under this uh carceral system so um shout out to MBO for supporting us and getting us we're still bailing people out um we got an action on Friday um so stay tuned Yes. Thank you. Thank you. Thank you, Medusa. Again, first timers with the Black Mamas bailouts, and y'all also did that. Um, folks getting out is a win. Not paying bail and getting folks out <laughs> is a hell of a win. Um, y'all brought seven, it sounds like seven folks home. So a lot of love and gratitude to y'all. Um, and again, just a reminder of Pat Hussein, co-founder of Southerners and New Ground, who just says that um, money kept y'all in, but Black love got y'all out. And this is just a testament that the like, love got folks out. It, wasn't, it didn't have to be the money. It was the love that got folks out um, and then brought them straight into community. So thank y'all for that. So I'm going to pass it off to Candice from Philadelphia Community Bill Fund to move through all y'all bill efforts because y'all been moving for like months now, months, getting folks home for Mama's Day. You're on mute. <laughs> yeah. So, um, yeah, Philadelphia Community Bail Fund, we were founded in May 2017 with the first, I think that was the first Mama's Black Mama's Bailout. Um, and so that was very small in comparison. I think we got 13 women home that year. Um, so just since then, we have bailed out 327 people. Um, and we spent um, about $1.4 million in bail. Um, and so that's a lot, but most of that really has been since COVID started. So March 16th, we started our emergency COVID bailout. So usually our process, we go into the jails, we meet people who want to be bailed out, we get consent, 
you get signed bail summit forms, you find out who their support networks are to try to, you know, get them support once they get out, make sure they're okay. And so with COVID, we haven't been able to do any of that. Um, and so we have just been getting lists of people from the defenders um, and from just individual family members and just as soon as we get money in the door, post the bail. Um, and so a lot of that money, we might not see return to the bail fund, um, which is fine because um, people are freeing out and they can use that money. All the people that we're bailing out once it goes back to them. Um, and so since March 16th, we've bailed out 134 people for that emergency bail out. We spent about $589,000 to bring them home and almost, I would say another forty to fifty thousand dollars in support. So for everyone we bring home, we provide like our usual support is transit support, um, up to a thousand dollars in cash support. So they need groceries to pay bills, to pay rent, things like that. Um, and then we also do like you know other non-monetary support with people. Um, that has been upped because of COVID. Um, so some of the people that we bailed out um, once we were, for this, for, we bailed out 27 black mamas. So six of those were the people that we bailed out um, in the big group that um, Medusa and Sydney Act Now Collective helped us welcome home. Usually for Mother's Day, it's like a really big deal for us. Um, we partner with this group called People's Paper Co-op um, who does a lot of artwork and they have um, a, a women in the reentry program. And so we link it to the women in reentry day that they lead and we have a big welcome thing, and then that's a big dinner. And so COVID has really changed a lot of that. But we were still able to be out at the jail that day. We brought the six women home with banners, welcoming people, not hugs, but, you know, what kind of forever salutes and masks and rides home. And so now we're able to meet people. We partner with someone who recently, who's formerly incarcerated, to meet people at the jail once we bail them out. So we're able to meet the mamas that we've been building out since then, give them masks, give them support, get those signs, bail them at home so the money can revolve and take them home. Um, some people haven't had homes to go to, so we have sent, we brought them to a hotel um, and then tried to arrange for them to get housing later so that no one is left in a lurch. Um, and it's been, a, the support has been a lot of work um, for us. And so we have someone that we're paying a stipend also from the incarcerated black woman who is spearheading a lot of the support work, meeting people at the jails and making sure that the women have connections, um, plugging women into like the work of the Disney at Mail Collective and um, people, people's paper co-ops, um, women in reentry program. Um, and then we have a, a, a lot of volunteers who are part of our support network doing support calls. Um, calling people, making sure they have what they need, and us trying to get more money towards them. So, um, yeah, COVID has meant that we've had to change a lot of things. Um, we're still building out women. Um, we've got, um, we're still fundraising also and selling art and T-shirts um, that was made by the women at the People's Paper Co-op. So that's going well. So we're still going to be bailing women out. Um, we were able to bring home um, one trans sister who was facing a lot of abuse. Um, and her bill alone was $25,000 to get out. So we're talking about a lot of these bills that we're posting are very big. We have women willing to get out. One, that's $100,000 to get her out right now. I don't know if that's going to be possible for us, but we're also working with the defenders and some lawyer friends who are helping us um, get bail reduction motions. and to get released. We've gotten a lot of people released um, with us posting bail through those partnerships. I don't have the numbers on those because we've just been working as hard as we can to get as many people free as we can. Thank you, Candace. Um, 134 folks wrote home since COVID, 27 black mamas wrote home since COVID is a lot. Um, so much a lot and I know you are one of those staff people or the staff person at PCBF so just like a lot of gratitude and appreciation for you um, and y'all's fundraising strategies you just name like 
thousands of dollars that have gone into these bailouts and to these supportive services. And y'all fundraising strategies are ones that I have admired, admired a lot. And the ways that your partnerships and the way that you really bring your community in has been part of this work is just, again, a testament to like this like mass mobilization and movement and also Black love and, and bringing our folks into this work to continue on that tradition of getting our folks home. So lots, lots of care for y'all. Um, we have a couple more minutes in this section, so I'm wondering if folks can speak to really quick, like rapid, rapid fire, either one, uh, a really big highlight that you have from this bailout that you may have not named already, or two, um, how have these bails been a part of your organized strategy? If, you're, if you've had campaigns that have been going on, or you're looking to start a campaign or whatever it may be, just a rapid fire for those two questions. Pick whatever one beats your heart. Yeah. Um COVID and Black Woman's Bailout, we've just been merging them together. Um, so our Black Woman's Bailout has been since March, basically, as well. Um, just, you know, the money we raise for Black Mamas only goes to Black Mamas, but we also just, if we have the money, we bail people out. So it's really been part of our strategy because we've done a lot more um, actions now. Um, we work with this coalition called the No To Long Tell Jail Coalition, which is a bunch of different Philly groups working on decarceration. And so we've done car rallies around City Hall, interrupting um, the mayor's briefings about COVID. We've confronted judges outside of the courtroom with coffins for people who have died um, and chased them around with them. Um, and, you know, we're just trying to escalate that. Now we're going, we're trying to go hard after Larry Krasner, our so-called progressive DA, who is routinely now asking for $1 less than a million dollars for people's bonds. And these are people who are charged with attempted murder or murder all the way to people who will just have drug possession. So it's like he claims it for our safety, but it's a lot of people they're asking for a million dollar bonds for. And uh, for children, it's routine for young people to have close to a million dollar bond. So like we're trying to like as a city, really step it up and put the pressure on all these people to free our people and to put up or shut up, especially when they're trying to come across as like for the people and progressive. Thank you, Candace. Opening the space for Vera Medusa to add any highlights or strategy if desired. Um, for myself, well, for South Florida, um, we were working on stopping a jail from being built um, before COVID was a thing. Um, we had been um, showing up to the commission, doing actions down at the commission to stop the building of this $400 million jail, which will be an additional pre-detention center. And um, so we had already been in contact with our commissioners, the state's attorney office. I mean, everybody trying to lobby against that. And um, it came in handy when it came to do, doing the bailout um, because we already had lists of how many people were in there, who were inside, um, the, the demographics of what was going on in the inside, the conditions of what were going on in the inside. So that was extremely helpful. So I think um, that helped out with our organizing and um, also um, with the release, the demands we had around COVID, it really helped out with that. Um, one thing the bailout did bring to my attention that I will be trying to follow resolution with our county is that um, we do want the everybody to be released as soon as possible once bail is paid, but to release somebody at 5 a.m. in the morning with no wraparound services, um, ma'am, sir, you, you get billions of dollars in your budget. You can give a bus pass, you can have a shuttle, you can give a free phone call or two and have a safe place for people to sit that's covered outside the facility. Like it's things they can do to help people that they just don't want to do and they have the budget to do so. So um, with that being like, you know, brought to my attention, um, we definitely are going to move on changing that, especially in our in, in Miami-Dade County. So that's that's where um, I think it had the our previous organizing, um, you know, the organizing that was happening, it helped slow the bell out better to me. However, the experience we we saw and what we had, we want to make sure that these things don't happen to anybody else. And then to hear horror stories from other um, individuals who have been raped or murdered when they have been released at 3 a.m. or 4 a.m. in the morning and not allowed to make a phone call or given um, 
assistance with um, transportation. So, yeah. Thank you for that, V. Yeah, these ballots really do. Another reason why we do this as a strategic tactic is because it uncovers so much things that we would have known if, these, if they weren't happening. So, absolutely. And I saw Candace, you, you raised your hand, I think. Was it was that a response to V? Yeah. Oh, I just wanted to add one thing I forgot about um, is that we've been doing a lot of organizing inside. And so we've had um, uh, connections with um, Black women and Latino women inside the jail to help us with internal organizing and getting referrals. Um, and so one of the things we've recently done is we had a campaign to raise, um, I think it was $11,000 so we can buy radios to distribute within RCS so people could buy on that commissary. And so part of our action that we're going to do this Friday is we're having a guerrilla radio that's going to be happening so that the people inside can like be a part of our outside protest and, and pick it up on their short wave radio. Um, so yeah, that's been great because there's a lot of people inside, um, trans men, um, you know, black women, Latino women who've been, who've been empowered to organize who don't even, a lot of them are just, some of them don't have like a pathway for release as far as paying bail because they have detainers and things holding them, but people have been really activated um, to organize. That is so dope. And Titalayo commented to, to share with you, Alex, so brilliant and inspire, inspiring. Um, and I just love that the, organi the organizing is happening in all places and spaces outside and inside um, to push us towards ending all of this shit. Dope. Okay, so I don't see Medusa, so I'm gonna pass it off to Arissa um, to move us through some MBO next steps. Or if Medusa's there, you can share a highlight real quick if you like. Okay. The whole thing was a highlight, like the, the all of it. Like uh, my, my leaders in Pittsburgh, they were so excited. They'd never participated in a, in a protest or what have you. We did have some um, police come out or whatever, but we did have some police liaisons who was able to, like, uh, they were citing people. They've never cited anybody in any of the cards protests that they've been doing. They cited, they, we, one of our, um, one of our comrades was cited um, at the event, but we were still able to, like, like, raise it up. The, the, the women who were in the Allegheny County Jail, they came to the windows. They, you know, they was beating on the windows with us. Uh, we were chanting. It, it really did, um, and especially like in Pittsburgh, where it's like, you know, 30% black, like it was a really good show of um, a solidarity. Yeah. Thank you, Medusa. I'm loving it. So I'll pass it off to Risa to lead us into MBO updates. Yes. Thank you, Zelaine. Thank you all for sharing um, so much of this beautiful and powerful work that y'all are moving. Um, so just to give some general next steps as far as the work that we're doing collectively with national bailout is that we are going to be continuing to do bailouts um, as folks already on this panel have named um, we're going to be doing bailouts and bailing out black mamas and caregivers from cages until the end of may um, so you can expect to you can definitely follow that work on um, all of our social media platforms at national bailout um, and you can definitely continue to support that work at National Bailout and can support um, specific local organizations and groups um, by going on our website as well, um, as you'll see um, all of their logos, um, in, which is hyperlinked to their website. Um, and as I named at the beginning of this conversation, the work, the really uh, post-bailout critical work um, that's a little bit less sexy um, is the work that we are um, carrying out and focusing on as well. And that is the work of supportive services. Um, so since the beginning of National Bailout, we have deeply invested in supportive services. Um, we have, just as you heard on this call today, we've identified um, needs from our people that have ranged from childcare to, um, and transporta transportation um, to short-term and long-term housing um, to therapy needs. And so, these needs have always been self-identified. Um, it's been through needs assessment tools um, that our organizers have been carrying out um, to one-on-one -on -one conversations um, that folks were able to do uh, prior to the bailouts. 
Um, and so this is the work that we've been doing. And since the beginning, we've, uh, we've invested over $400,000 um, in supportive services and counting. Um, and we are going to continue to do that. What has changed and what we are super excited about has been our healing and grief circles. Um, as we know that this is a time of immense stress for people um, in a crisis. Um, we know that like it's really important for our supportive services um, to expand um, and to meet the needs um, that are like healing um, of our people. So we are now offering healing and grief circles um, and grief counseling to our organizers and to the folks that are coming home. Um, and that'll be a weekly offering that'll be hosted um, by Harmony Phoenix. And we are really, really excited to be able to do that. Um, and to be able to just hold space um, for our people in a, in a new way um, within National Bailout. And our next exciting thing that we're gonna be doing is a debrief. Um, so we, are, we have a tentative date um, of a debrief that will be Monday, June 8th, um, and most likely will be from 4 to 6 p.m. Eastern, um, but we will be able to confirm that at the end of this week. But this debrief is going to be an opportunity, a digital, beautiful opportunity for folks to celebrate. Um, you've heard so much of the wins that have happened um, in the midst of COVID, in the midst of, all, of barriers and challenges, um, and the wins still happen. Um, so we're gonna be celebrating that multiple Black people got released from cages um, during the crisis, that multiple Black people got, got the ability to be able to have housing and groceries and PPE um, and support um, in the midst of all of this, and that organizing still happen, um, and victory still happen. And we invite all of you to join us, uh, to come celebrate with us, to do a happy dance, and to shake, and to shake your fingers, and all of that via uh, Zoom. And, and really, really hope that folks uh, will be able to join us. And part of how we are also ensuring that our um, folks coming home are able to join us is that we also are providing smartphones um, to the folks that we bail out, which we are super excited about, like having the ability to do so people can connect with their loved ones, um, especially in our digital world. Um, and so shout out to Christina, who is on this call, um, and the folks from, um, and Andrew and folks from Cage Free Cannabis who actually supported um, us in getting these smartphones to our folks. So please, please, please be on the lookout for that information. And if people want to continue to support that work that we do because the work is continuing, um, again, people can go to our website, which is nationalbellout.org, um, and folks can always hit us up. And I am going to pass it back to you during the questions. Wonderful, thank you, Arissa. And yes, we are so hyped that we can get um, the folks returning home phones, not only to have them, but also, you know, to like be in contact with their their friends and their family and their communities and, the, and also the folks who are helping to bring them home to get to their court dates, all the things. So we're just really excited. Um, so I'm gonna open it up now for questions. Um, well, first I'm gonna open up for an open call. We have some folks in the call who have partici participated in a bailout, whether that be through fundraising or support services or um, the bailouts are helping plan their homecoming. So if there were folks on the call who wanted to, on the, on the line who wanted to share their bailout, bailout efforts, um, now's a space for you to do so. So you can raise your hand or you can comment in the chat box and then I can give you um, access to speak. So I'll wait a couple seconds in case anyone wants to, wants to talk. Ooh, I see a hand raise. Okay, Mina. Oh, you're on mute. You're on mute, Mina. <laughs> Coming from there you Mina go. from East St. Louis. Um, I pronouns I use she and her. I'm working with UCM, and this is my very first bell out the lane. And yeah. who's UCM? Just, huh? Who's UCM? United uh, Metro East. Yeah, United Congregation Metro East. I'm working with Tiara. Um, I think the most. I'm gonna just jump to the highlight part. Uh, today, I had the opportunity to speak with the mamas over the phone and just kind of let them know that, that there's some support in the area. And I had um, also let them know that I work with mental health. So I know, 
like I had mentioned last week, we transitioned from going to jail to home. It's like you need to take a breather, you need to get your mind together, you need to focus. But I'm really excited about uh, the bailout because now I'm in this space. Now I see, I'm looking like, okay, it's well worth it, one. I'm already doing the work. I've been doing the work for years in the community. It just hasn't clicked together from the word grassroots all the way back over to national bailout. So now I see how important it is with women being stuck behind the jail cell and not having no support. So I'm really excited about all three mamas in East St. Louis. This is the first time we ever had a, a national bailout for black women here in East St. Louis. First time. Normally it's in St. Louis, it's everywhere else except for here. So I'm really excited about just being in this space. That's one of my highlights of the week. So I just look forward to just updating my track and just getting to know the women a little more and definitely just continuing with the bell out, I guess, next year. <laughs> um, but uh, first and foremost, uh, the supportive services. I know one of the mamas, they was need, in need of some, some housing and some other things. So I'm really excited about just connecting with another sister from here, first of all, Tiara, um, to just be able to do this doggone work. Because when it was first presented, I was like, what? You know, I, I heard about it and I contributed to it in the past, but I didn't I didn't really get the full scoop until I started digging deep. And I realized I knew a lot of the black women around here that was put in situations that couldn't even get out of jail for nothing in this world. Look stupid stuff, too. And I'm like, it got to be a better way. So... I tagged on with Tiara, so here I am. I'm full force in it, so I just look forward to fundraising or whatever strategies I can use to try to come up with to help another sister um, who's willing and able to get out. I'm, I'm, I'm full force with it. So I just want to just share that, uh, just to be in this space with black women, period. Because, you know, normally it's always black woman, black woman, another color, Asian, or something like that, which I'm not racist. I just want to clear the, clear the air about that. But I'm just saying it's just good to be up in this space. So that's my highlight. <laughs> Thank you. <laughs> you are so hype, and I really love and appreciate it. Like, you showing up on these old operations committee calls. You be on the bill track. We love it. <laughs> I'm being honest. This is my first time. Could you believe that? This is my first time ever doing something like this. Yeah. But um, I'm thankful for Tiara once again. Um, she trained me and she showed me everything that I needed to know. So I'm like, let me go ahead and just try to bet, try my best and plug in something. But today I made sure I called the mamas and I reached out to them like, look, I know you need to breathe and you need to get back to this. But yeah, I'm, I look forward to more work and fundraisers and stuff like that. You know, normally I don't, but I do this time. Thank you, Mina. Thank you. <laughs> All right. All right. How do I? There we go. So, thank you, Mina. Shout out to Tiara Moore, who's also on this call, who has been doing the work, um, who has been leading bailouts now for two years. Like, thank you and much love and appreciation for you, Tiara Moore. All right. Is there anyone else in the call who wants to give a little quick highlight, shout out to their work? Mm -hmm. Just raise your hand or you can comment in the um, comment box. Okay, it seems like not. So also wanna open this space for any questions that folks may have um, for any of our panelists who are on the call with us today or any just questions you have generally around national bailout and, the, and Black Mamas bailouts. You can put your questions into the chat box or you can put your questions into the Q&A. To Talaya wants to speak. Talaya. I see you. Ooh. Talaya, where did you go? Okay. Oh, there you go. Hey. Hi, Keith. Hello. Hi, y'all. Background. Uh, um. Yeah, I, I'm trying to like ground my nervous system and like not be too excited so I can share more clearly and lucidly. Um, but shout out to my frolic, Miss Betty, who was trying to act shy. That's why the delay, you already know we was trying to say things. But I was like, Miss Betty, you go. Um, but I am channeling and bringing the energy of Miss Betty <laughs> um, into this update. Um, but we were so, so, so grateful to be able to welcome home Miss W who were, we were able to bail out in LA. This week was just such, um, like, it's an experience I'll never forget. And it was my first 
um, bailout, um, myself holding it as he has been holding it for, I believe, four years now. Um, and we threw down with Dignity and Power Now. Shout out to James, who's also on the call. Um, Young Women's Freedom Center, uh, La Defensa, Justice LA, uh, Justice Teams Network. Seriously, it was just such a community and team effort. Um, and we're just so, so grateful um, to be able to have gotten the 200K again. Shout out to MBO. Like literally last Tuesday, it was really so scary because we've been talking to this mama and we were just like, we... Um, are coming for you. And like one of the things that I will never forget that she said to us when we were able to call her and tell her we had the funds, she was like, thank you for keeping your word to me. And it was just like, uh, you know, like, and thank you guys for keeping your word. You know, like it's because of the organizing that we did, it was truly black love coming for this mama that we were able to do that. And we were able to have a caravan on Mother's Day. It was so serendipitous. Like all of this was truly like, I, I'm so regrounded in my faith, right? So um, serendipitously last week, we were already planning a caravan to welcome this mama home. And then a new way of life, the organization that's holding her reentry was like, hey, we're already holding a caravan. And a lot of our, um, <laughs> a lot of our community partners were already, you know, on it. So we were like, we coming. <laughs> um, so we had a caravan in front of Linwood Jail, the facility where um, my, um, women are, and you know, gender not conforming folks are held um, in LA. And we were able to run around that place and honk and just shout and just like let mamas know that they are loved and cared for. And we we're able to uplift, you know, and call out the LA County Sheriff's Department for the 10 mamas at least who are held and pregnant in Linwood Jail and be able to call attention and demand that they're that they are released. Um, and even though in another part of California, we're working with a case where a mama had to give birth earlier this month in custody. And literally yesterday, um, the judge decided that like, oh, she gets seven more days, like so that the baby can put on weight, literally words from the judge, right? So we were again, like, you know, targeting the Judicial Council of California because in our partnerships with our public defenders, we were seeing that it was judicial discretion that was keeping our people in. And so we were saying like, look, ju judges always think that they're impervious to, um, to political um, dissent impervious to like the people. And so we were like, we're calling, we're emailing over 200 people have emailed the Judicial Council of California demanding a set of demands. <laughs> um, and we're happy to circulate that and it's on our social media. Um, so Monday we went to the jail with a $200,000 check and the Sheriff's Department literally turned us away, told us that they didn't accept that form of payment for human bodies. And truly that, that was like one of the most trippy experiences. I was like the CFO of the bank is on the line to tell you that this is $200,000. And they were like, no, come back with a cash or money order or cashier's check. And I was like, I will, like, I was just so mad. I was so mad. But like, I was like, I'm coming for mine. We are coming for ours. So Tuesday, we ran up in that place and we came for ours. And throughout that whole process, we were disrespected. You know, throughout that whole process, they told us to stop calling because we were calling like, hey, are you doing the medical evaluation that she needs? You know, she has a broken back and we need to get medical clearance and make sure that she is clear to be released. You need to do that now. Like, you know, just things that we were following up and at all turns, you know, we were put on hold. We would have to hang up and call back. You know, we were told to stop calling. And, you know, at one point they were like, no, we were not giving you any more updates. No, we will not give you anything. You know, so it's just continuing to expose and to show the disrespect, the inhumanity, you know, and the ways in which these judges continue to put the value, you know, put numerical values on human lives to say that somebody's life is worth $200,000, $500,000. And we're modeling a new way and saying, no, we are dreaming and scheming with our mamas. We're doing needs assessment and supporting them. We're marshalling the resources of this community to wrap around them and love on them. And we come for ours and we stay with ours. Um, and the mama that we bailed out, she said that she knows that this is like a lifelong, you know, walk that we're with her on. And yes, this is day one of, you know, gang gang, <laughs> you know, just continue to be with her, you know, that we, um, that she is ours and she's going to be part of our community. And we, in a note that we um, provided in the welcome home basket, let her know she is flanked, she is resourced, and we love her. Um, so just continues to shout out to everyone. And we're just so grateful. I'm so grateful to have been part of this. 
Yes. 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 Thank you for joining us. All over the country. And like you said, y'all are coming for ours. We are coming for ours. Thank you. Yes. Yes. I, yes, I'm super full. Um, Super full. And I would love if you can tell folks, especially the folks in California, um, how to support, especially with the Judicial Council demand. Absolutely. Um, so to MBO, just letting you know, we're creating a smug mug with all the photos. Don't think we forgot you. We let you know, don't even play. Yeah, <laughs> <laughs> uh, so definitely we're working on that. We want to just make sure that we're doing the photos in a way that doesn't invade her privacy and it's an ongoing case, things like that. So we just have to be cute you know i'm too excited and i'll send it <laughs> i had to go through somebody else um but in terms of like advocacy to the judicial council yes we're turning up the heat and we're demanding that one that they re extend the zero dollar bail that they set for m low level misdemeanors and um, felonies to everyone help retrial because these are not death sentences and our people deserve to <laughs> like humanity and dignity and that applies to everyone help retrial and then in terms of the implementation of the zero dollar bail we're demanding collective processes instead of this case by case mess where that they're just exploiting administrative loopholes or whatever they can to slow down and stop people from being released we're demanding that it's a collective order to immediately release people count like across the counties because we're seeing different counties you know doing different things so your ability and your freedom and your life is literally contingent upon the ways that the officials in your county are responding and these people are not responding with humanity and finally we're demanding that they quash affirmatively all arrest warrants so like what is the point of like having a zero dollar bill if you're still arresting people you're still bringing people into custody for no reason just to be processed out you know so we're just demanding that there is a structural process by which that they are you know really coming down on the judicial discretion that we're seeing because again like people t saying that a baby only deserves one week <laughs> to suckle at their baby <laughs> with their mother it is the inhumanity that we're dealing with and so there needs to be a top-down approach and with a clear direction and that's what we're demanding um so please go on our social media um sc for justice is the instagram um sc justice group um on facebook um and happy to like um what you know put some more links in the caption also for women let me shout this out um because lives on the line um is a campaign that se justice group just launched um and we are trying to uh, um collect the voices of women who have loved ones who've been incarcerated across the country and you know amplify the voices <clears throat> and the experiences. Um, so we have outlined the demands that SE sisters, the women um, in our membership, they've articulated demands that we have posted on, on this website. And um, there's an opportunity for folks to, you know, post their own videos. Um, so it's an interactive space and the whole point of it, and there's a survey that is really essential. And it is for not just women, it's for everyone who has loved ones who have been incarcerated. We're trying to collect data so that we're able to better advocate and by better understanding what's going on in jails and facilities across the country. So we really, I'm going to post a link in the description box. I just posted it. Thank you. Thank you. <laughs> So, uh, yeah, we're really um, looking for people to amplify their voices in that way, because as we all know, it's, it is serious. Lives are on the line. Um, so let's just all throw down. And I'm just so amazed by all the brilliance in this space. I'm just so grateful to share in the space. Thank you, Victoria. Yes, yes. Dope. Thank you, thank you, thank you. Um, so again, we're opening it up for questions. Uh, and let me see, I think we had any. One question we got earlier on was, how can we get more involved in New York and support on a national level? So if anyone wants to take that. Well, New York is national. Yeah, so we have a, a member organization um, Baji Black Alliance for Just Immigration, who has a base in New York. Um, so, hey, Emily, so we can definitely connect you to them. Um, and they, they have like been holding down bailouts in New York since 2017. Um, and just like supporting immigrant communities um, around dec decriminalization organizing. So definitely could connect. And on a national level, we're going to be 
figuring out some support um, and like just capturing all of the brilliance, um, all of this talent of our larger community, which is y'all um, soon. So we're going to be like gathering up all that information to then figure out like, okay, bet. Emily, I know you be doing the things in um, West Harlem, East Harlem, East Harlem, I think. Um, you'll correct me if I'm wrong. But right, so like, you know, like what, what does that look like for us to, you know, if we got like a mama um, or doing something uptown, right, for like y'all to support um, and just like all of the amazing other organizing I know that you're doing. Um, so yeah, so we are going to, so be on the lookout for us um, from, for a survey in the, in the short future. Um, and then Emily specifically, I could definitely connect you with the folks from Baje who is out here doing the work and have been providing supportive services on other um, New York based uh, COVID-19 bailouts and just like really making sure our people are held and supported as well. Thank you, Ressa. Um... Okay. If folks have questions, go ahead and post them in. Somebody contact. Okay. Okay, Mina. <laughs> and tell them the farmer from East St. Louis is aboard. Absolutely. And also someone tell them to, to instead of donating $200,000 or whatever it was for, for mass or whatever it was to bail people out, to put more money where their mouth is. Let's time to do that too. All right, if there are no more questions uh, and no other thoughts or questions from our panelists, then I believe we may have just concluded um, almost our last webinar of our series. But we just got one other question around, has MBL thought about doing a national training for organizations, something similar to how participatory defense hosts trainings? I'm interested in, in the types of national trainings that um, you're thinking about, Tierra. Uh, there are a couple asks from our, our debrief last year as the things that people need, skills, like knowledge, um, trainings that we are able to provide this year during our pre-convening. Uh, and we're having our debrief, uh, as Rissa mentioned, in a couple of weeks. Now also be a space to ask our people who have been doing this work, who have been on the ground, what do y'all need? And how can we help pro provide and support that for you? Um, and get really get a compilation of possible trainers or possible other things that um, folks are needing to do the work better and stronger um, and anything at all. So we'll be looking for some of your thoughts, Tierra, in regards to what some trainers that you may be asking or needing for when we have our debrief the sec the third week in, I believe, in June. So look out for that, folks. But absolutely, yes, we're, also, we're always wondering and trying to think about how do we best support our people. And then another question is, are there recordings available on your website? They're not currently available on our website. Um, we've been sending them out to folks who register for the webinar, been sending it out every week. Um, but if you email me directly, I can send you all the links. Um, and we're also working on getting our website back on it's on. It's on? It's on, yeah. Um, and we can have those made available actually by the end of the week on our website, the recording, which is in two days. So yeah, we can definitely do that. Okay, any last questions, friends and fam? If there's no more questions, just want to express so much gratitude to y'all. Um, as I shared the numbers, the amount that we've been able to raise um, in the work that like we continue to do, like this critical, this literally life-saving, um, life-affirming work that we are doing um, for Black Mamas and caregivers and have done this with so much possibility and also so much uh, insecurity because we are living in a time where there's a lot of questions and a lot of unknowns and did not know like that we were going to be able to do this work in this way. Um, but our organizers, ourselves, like really showed up and showed out um, across the country and said yes, like Dorona who? Like we still coming to get our people 
right? And we doing that in spite of all of the things, right? We're going to put on these masks. We're going to call folks. We're going to go online. We're going to do car, car, uh, you know, the things in the cars. Um, and we're going to do all of that, right? So the fact that we've been able to do that um, in the spirit of freeing our people, in the spirit of liberation, just shout out. So like, shout out to all y'all on this call. Shout out to my damn self. Shout out to everybody that show up and show it out. Um, and we're going to continue to do this work. So like free black mamas, um, free freedom all, um, and free our people. Free them until ain't, no, and ain't nobody else to free. Um, and so please, please, please stay on the lookout for our work. Always shout out a national bailout. Always shout out free black mamas. Always shout out Levi, who is my child, who's crying at that. Um, <laughs> as always. And yeah, so thank y'all so much. Um, thank y'all so, so much. Literally, this would not have been possible without you. Like, this would not have been possible without you. So I hope that everyone gets to celebrate themselves tonight on this call. And much love. And so much love to y'all. And that is our Free Black Mamas webinar series. Yes. We Peace, y'all. Thank y'all. Bye. Bye.